Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to India's one of the biggest and powerful cohorts of the year, Tech Accelerate. My name is Ashwarya, and I would like to welcome and introduce you to Ms. Deepa Sayar. Deepa is the founder and president of iWindia, a nonprofit organization for women entrepreneurs and Tech Supergirl, a platform to incubate tech-based startups. She herself is a serial entrepreneur running four successful startups of her own and digital transformation evangelist. She has been featured in the top 100 women entrepreneurs compendium in India, conferred by Ms. Nitin Gadkari, MSME Industry. Here I welcome Ms. Deepa in the forum. A very warm good afternoon to all the beautiful ladies. My name is Deepa Sayal, like Ashwarya said, and I'm the president for I Will India. And I also hold and run a community which is called Tech Supergirl. I assure you that the experiences that we are going to create in India are going to be never before. We are trying to build a mentor network with already 200 plus mentors on board. We are happy to tell you that for the last three months, we must have met 450 plus women entrepreneurs in the sunrise industries like blockchain, IoT, edutech. Very proud to tell you that we have worked with CII, FIKI, Shell, and now this program, Tax Accelerate, we are working with AWS, Amazon. We are very proud of this journey. And I'd like to tell you that we already have impacted about 30,000 plus women, almost 150 plus A-level institutions like Bits Pilani's, IIM's and IIT's. We are already coaching and mentoring women. And of course, MSM is there. And we aspire to build a world-class experience for all the women. If you were to ask me a question, what does this community stand for? I'd say this community would contribute to the GDP of the country. We are already the fifth largest, but incidentally, we women are only in 14% of the MSMEs that are in, in the country at the moment. And at I Will India and Tech Supergirl, we want to change that. So I'd like to introduce Amira. We have Amira Shah with us. Uh, she's the managing director of Metropolis Healthcare, a multinational chain of pathology centers based in Mumbai with presence in seven countries. She was named India's most powerful women in business in 2017 and 18 by Fortune India. She obtained a degree in finance from the University of Texas at Austin, and she took over her father's business in 2001 mm -hmm. and transformed a single diagnostic lab, which had a revenue of 1.5 million and 40 employees to about 125 diagnostic labs with 90 million US dollars in revenue with 4,500 employees. We are very proud to tell you that we are very, very excited. Amira, hello, a warm hello to you. Are you there? I'm here, Deepa, how are you? I'm very well and lovely, lovely to see you today. It's beautiful and thank you for sparing your time today. We'd like to know about your journey, that the challenges that you have faced in your journey, how you started, what motivated you? <clears throat> Thanks, Deepa. So I, I grew up in Bombay, guys, and, and I went to the US. Uh, I studied at my undergrad and I came back to India in 2001. And as uh, probably a lot of you uh, were probably very young then, I don't know what the average age of the audience is. I'm assuming mostly in the 20s and 30s. Uh, I'm not that much older, I'm in my 40s, um, but in 2001, it was very uncool to come back to India and most people were staying in New York or in, uh, in the US uh, or in London uh, because that's where the opportunities were. So I was a contrarian and I always have been a contrarian uh, pretty much my entire life. I was a contrarian in that decision as well where I decided to come back and all my friends told me, you're crazy, what are you going to do in India, there's nothing here. And I was very clear that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and the opportunity for me was to either do that in the US uh, or to come back to India. And I felt that being patriotic, I wanted to come back and give back to my country. Uh, my parents were both doctors um, and at the time both had successful practices of their own. I felt that there was a humongous opportunity in healthcare to go beyond the doctor led practice to actually building an institution, to building an organization. Uh, it was not really, uh, Deepa mentioned was the business wasn't really a business at the time. It was more of a, a doctor's practice, uh, which I got an opportunity to take as a platform, uh, you know, because there were employees, there was uh, a brand called Dr. Sushil Shah's lab, there was good quality. And I was able to metamorphize this to uh, really building an institution uh, that is today called Metropolis. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we're not only in 200 cities across India, uh, but in five countries uh, with four and a half thousand employees uh, and a market cap of uh, two billion plus. Uh, and I think the earlier you start to actually work independently without the shadow uh, of the, you know, parents or uh, elders above you, the earlier you are, it starts, you start to hear your own voice. 
Of course, that means that you will go wrong along the way. Uh, I did. I had many things that I failed on. Uh, but what was important is I was learning to hear my own voice and learning to trust my own voice. If you're afraid of conflict, the only way to build confidence is actually go through conflicting situations to come on the other side, realizing that you have the ability and the to go through conflict. You have the ability to solve that conflict and still be okay after that without being damaged. Because the reason you don't like conflict usually is the anxiety and the fear that comes with what does the, how does that conflict impact me? So I've seen that whatever I've been afraid of and whatever has caused me anxiety, when I go through that and I actually create that experience for myself and I face it, uh, I often come out far more confident um, on the other side. And that's been a big learning lesson for me um, in these past 20 years. Uh, the few challenges and the few learnings that I had along when we scaled was number one, um, and this was of course much more of a challenge in the brick and mortar world than the tech world, uh, was that because of a lack of funding, and a lack of you know, constant capital and, and being worried about our profitability, um, I never invested in really good talent up front. Um, and or neither did I you know, invest in really good technology up front. Uh, both of these came much later when there was um, financials were easier and we were never really had a chance to be aggressive. Um, but the other thing I will tell you is the lesson that I learned was about avoiding complexity. And what do I mean by that? Often you'll see whether tech or non-tech businesses really, um, you know, try to go into multiple countries, multiple formats, multiple business models, uh, multiple different things, which leaves a lot of complexity uh, in the business. Uh, and you want to try and keep things really, really simple, especially in the first five to 10 years. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I would definitely recommend. Mostly women in India. Okay, this is, I really love listening to your story, but ladies and operations, funding, everything comes secondary. What I have found while I talk to many women, they are struggling to do validation, find validation in the idea that they believe in. So assume that I have started business, but I don't have confidence to scale. And I am validation to find out what my business will go. Family belief, values, you know, challenges of being a woman. What is your thought of that? When you started, you have established a powerful business setup. So, what would you like to say? What would you like to say? What would you like to say? We all seek validation um, and we all look for it at some level. The only difference is women are seeking it more sometimes than men. And that is the reality. And that the reason for that is, like I said, the point that I made about self doubt and lack of confidence at the same level. Uh, we question ourselves. The way I walked around it was I did three things. One thing is I was absolutely determined and resilient and committed to my course. And, and that is up to you. You have to stay extremely clear and firm that this is going to be your top priority. This is going to be what drives uh, you and your journey for the next 10 to 20 years is going to be very, very critical to you. Even if tomorrow the husbands come or the in-laws come or the kids come or the whoever comes and starts to try to make you feel guilty about uh, prioritizing uh, your journey or tries to make you feel bad for it or something else happens, uh, you're not going to deter from that journey otherwise you, unless you think it's the best thing for you to do. So that's number one. And that has to come from within each of us. The second is the validation will also come. But don't look for the validation only from your close people. Look from validation wherever you get it. So I found validation not necessarily coming always from my inner circle, but often the validation came from people that I met outside, which were either validating my brand, the service, the product, the quality, my leadership, um, and or you know even funding, for example, is a validation, right? Um, so I think go out there and look for validation wherever you find it. And third, if the validation is not forthcoming, you're at a very early start of part of your business and you just have an idea, you're not sure and you don't even know if it's going to be a commercial business viable model. What you can do is do pilots. Uh, do, you know, build your own validation and confirmation of belief in that particular business model. Uh, you don't have to do it by going and spending crazy amount of money or by going and hiring a very large team, but pilot your idea to get conviction. Remember that before the supermarket, uh, before there was anything, there was a Kirana store. Before there was a Kirana store, uh, there was even somebody standing on the road and selling lemonade. 
and you can pilot your idea for a, for a supermarket uh, by standing on that road and selling um, lemonade uh, and whether your product works or doesn't work. So it's about going down if necessary to the absolute uh, you know, bottom level to say, let me first build the confidence within myself because if you don't have the confidence in your own model and product or service, I can guarantee you, you will not be able to build that confidence in anybody. Wonderful. So I'll tell you about my experience while, while uh, you know, we are discussing this. I have lost a lot of money while building my company. I've been totally bootstrapped and I lost a, about three to four crores in a bank uh, thing. But I stood up and I started again. So challenges are coming, conflict is coming. One more thing I have to ask you. Amira, scale is how you acquire it. Look, every business is getting a lot of people. They are getting a lot of 2 crores, 3 crores, 4 crores, 5 crores. They are doing a lot of good things. But when you come to a big business, you know, when we are saying we want to scale, what is your opinion on that? How do we scale ko kaise broaden, kaise horizon ko hum, how do you think, what are the three important ingredients to build scale to your business? How do we build So number one, I think when you're going from being an individual business, uh, which is smaller, and you want to build scale, you need three things, right? Number one, you need a team. Mm-hmm. And like I referred to earlier, the good thing today is that you have the ability to access capital and build a team, or you have the opportunity to offer your own equity mm-hmm. and build a team. But number one is to build a team. Okay. Number two okay. is to have access to funding. And there is enough platforms today where you can actually go and put yourself out there and see if you're getting funded. And remember one thing, if you're not getting funded, it means something is not right. It means your business model, not that your business model is bad. But it means your business model needs a few tweaks for it to get funded. And number three, I think, is clarity of thought. Often I've seen that people are in a rush to start businesses or to scale businesses. Mm -hmm. But if there are 20 questions thrown at them by investors, they don't have clarity of thought or the ability to clearly communicate. So we all know investors are going to ask standard questions. They are going to ask you about your unit economics. Are you able to show them and prove to them exactly how your economics works? If you are not, then figure that out, right? Because if you are not able to do that, funding is going to be difficult, right? Are you going to be able to clearly articulate what is the value that you are adding to your customer? And right. is, there an, is there an unmet need uh, you know, that you're fulfilling, right? There's going to be a clear question on competition and how you are going to grow faster than the competition, what you're going to do differently. There's a standard deck of 10, 15, 20 questions that you're going to ask. Have you built the ability to have that clear thought is the third part. I think if these three are there, I think the rest of it can actually fall in place. Okay, this is fantastic. Two things that I want to say, and I always say that you don't go on business this way because everybody is turning to be an entrepreneur. You don't want to be an entrepreneur because the world is becoming an entrepreneur. You want to be an entrepreneur because... You want to add value or build a solution or a service that counts for a value. So, one is and the other is what you said, uh, Amira, ki courage of conviction. You have to have conviction. It's very important if you have to wait through this. If you're thinking about an idea or you have an idea that you want to scale or you already have a business that you want, some people just give up. I have to tell you, there are many, uh, 50% of the startups die in India, which is very, very sad. So, there's no harm changing your direction and course and maybe starting a new startup. But don't give up because there's you never know if there's an opportunity sitting at the end of the road, you know. So that's what she says. It's worth it. I know of people, so Hamne's journey may sari char so long such a mulakat career. In both a chichi ladies, I don't know if Manisha is listening to it. She is from a village, just may tenth be low padini or what data analytics ka startup chalari, Manisha Jada. There's another one, stupa analytics. There's a lady, uh you can find me her name. We met so many women. She has spawned her wedding ring to put money in a startup. Now, I, we have had such women with such great ideas. And it's not that they have brick and mortar. There's no harm in running a brick and mortar startup. But they have some very innovative startups like, uh, you know, data analytics based on sports, uh, you know, based on artificial intelligence. These are some of the startups that are coming our way. Uh, when you say data dashboards and many other sunrise industries. So not, uh, I will take questions, Amira. A lot of people are uh, writing questions in the chat box. This is Aditi from Bryota Technologies, Pune. Uh, hello, ha- hello everybody. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Deepa, ma'am. And hello, Amira, ma'am. Uh, my company is into uh, AI ML handheld spirometer, which we use for diagnostic of lung health. Uh, we have been using this through the pandemic for home monitoring and home uh, care services. This is a remote monitoring and home monitoring services we are providing along with the uh, diagnostic. 
we have other services uh, connected to the devices okay we tried uh, connecting to diagnostic lab because nowadays the diagnostic lab believes in home monitoring after covid and uh, try to give the home monitoring services as much as possible for lung health basically somehow we are not able to uh, go further because uh, though we are validated though we have cdso certified devices somewhere it gets stuck because uh, you know, uh, we are not, we don't have a big name with us. So like we are not GE, you know, so, so, so that's why though, though the devices is proof, there is a proof, uh, you know, everything is done for the device. Doctors are using it, but diagnostic lab somehow is not able to uh, take us uh, into their, uh, you know, forte. So Aditi, and you know, each industry has got something which is considered as a moat or something which is considered as a difficult entry gate. Right, uh, right. Healthcare right. credibility uh, is that. Uh, you know, because you're dealing with healthcare and life and death, people tend to go for brands that are known uh, and are not as experimental with new companies that are unknown, right? right. Uh, right. That is unfortunately the reality of it. But in every industry, there are uh, companies that are looking for convenience uh, as a driver because they themselves may or may not have credibility as an established brand. Right. So what do you have to figure out in the healthcare area? Which are the companies who are looking to use convenience as an entry point into healthcare or as their main USP in healthcare uh, and really go after those guys rather than the traditional brick and mortar healthcare firms where credibility will still become the number one requirement. Right. right. I would right. suggest to think about it from that direction. Right. Uh, and and uh, uh, that will give you a better indication of which kind of customers to focus on. So some okay. of the... Some of the health tech customers, I think, would be more um, more open for this. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. All right. So we have more questions coming. Uh, Janana Ganana Ezil Krishnan, what is the support you can give to startups who are developing products in med tech domain with latest technologies, AI, uh, ML, and IoT, which is the Internet of Things? Since you already have a brand established in several countries. Revati and Krishnan from Aspire Medicare Technologies. Well, currently, um, you know, there's something I'm personally, and then of course there's something in Metropolis. Um, but personally, I have a platform called Empower Us, uh, where we help young, sort of doesn't have to be young, but women entrepreneurs, uh, just in terms of peer-to-peer -peer networking, in terms of my mentorship, in terms of, um, you know, uh, learning. I put up some videos on how to think about things. Um, so that's an area that possibly we could help you with. Um, this is obviously all pro bono. Um, the second area, uh, which Metropolis, uh, we do some stuff in, is we also do work with some startups uh, if we like the product or we like the service. Um, but of course, one of the concerns that always becomes when you work with a startup is the continue business continuity uh, and whether that actually you know continues because as organizations, you spend so much time in integrating that into your uh, ecosystem that if that doesn't continue it becomes a challenge so therefore we tend to be selective about who we work with uh, but that definitely is still an opportunity that's very well answers we have more questions Tarandeep running a 360 degree branding company called uplifto i also have a startup initiator in the pandemic called happy hotelier club new Delhi. my question is as an entrepreneur most challenging situation is how to invest in employees as a bootstrap even if we have two new employees for the growth of the company, do we put an investment from our savings towards it without worrying on the business returns? It's about spending on your teams. What are what is your take, Amira? Yeah, look, I mean, this it's a tough one, right? Because you know you're never really financially equipped and ready um, to invest in the teams. And the ideal situation is if you're able to give a lower fixed com uh, and bring in people that you're able to share some equity with, if they're valuable people to you, um, so that they are able to share your risk along the way and hopefully also gain in the return. Uh, but yes, I mean, that is something that you'll have to plan for uh, to invest in, in the people, uh, because otherwise it will be very difficult for you uh, to scale. But I'm saying at the right time, it doesn't necessarily need to be on day one. Uh, on day one, I think if you have the skills to be able to build your product or service um, in the early stages without needing too many uh, expensive people, that's great. But if you're not, then you have to invest in them. There's no other choice. That's, that's interesting. I mean, um, one of the questions that I have is like, I'm definitely going to take one or two more, but then uh, what have you thought? You know, what is your point on women entrepreneurs in the country? What do you think is the caveat that needs to change while scaling? What challenges have you gone through as a woman entrepreneur in the ecosystem? What is your take on that? As a woman entrepreneur or as an entrepreneur? 
as an entrepreneur, I don't want to be subjective. You can be, you know, uh, there are people who say women entrepreneurs also face challenges, but as an entrepreneur, it's a more generic term, I think. Without Look, I mean, I think the, the challenges were very large, right? Because like one challenge, like the question that came up is you never have enough capital to be able to do all the things you want to do. Um, and, and while that's very frustrating because your aspiration is here, but your resources are here, uh, it's very frustrating. But let me also tell you that because of that's where the innovation comes from. And that's where you uh, learn to how to bootstrap and learn to manage things. But there is a balance between bootstrapping and managing, but doing damage to yourself and the organization. Um, and, and because there, there is a certain space and time where you actually need to invest in scale without doing damage. Uh, that that point uh, is where uh, it's early in the industry, but there is beginning to be funding that is coming into your competition. So I would say that the, the thing to look out for, the red flag to look out for, is that if you have some, um, uh, you know, other companies or, or competitors who are getting funding and you have not yet gotten funded, uh, that is the time to start investing uh, in serious talent. Uh, because if you don't invest in serious talent at that point of time, uh, you will get left behind. Because with the prime money that they get, they will invest in better quality of talent. Absolutely. And I would like to add to it that, you know, your team is your building block. I feel like that. If your team is worth it, and if you think these are the guys who, who should be working with you and they're key stakeholders, I don't think there should be anything stopping you from investing, even if it means that you have to take risks. So risk taking ability is, is a very important component of scale. You know, this is from my personal experience of 20 years as an entrepreneur. Ki jab tak aap life mein risk nahi lenge, ye badi baat hai. If you're looking to go to be a unicorn, that is impossible. But they're your stakeholders, they are the ones you need to. You know, they are the ones who will propel your head. Now, very quickly, hi, I'm Damini Agarwal. We are a bunch of IIT graduates trying to build a self-driven system, a peer-to-peer -peer aggregator of assets and services like parking, renting. However, this is something that will plug in a billion people in the long run. Again, explaining this is very difficult to invest. My honor of startup revenue comes very late, but it's more about customer acquisition. And this is very tough. What are your thoughts on this? Sure. I mean, look, customer acquisition is always hard, but it's much easier when you have a good product and a good service. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end of the day, I mean, I think if customer acquisition is becoming harder and harder in your mm -hmm. business model, uh, I would say it means that there is something that needs to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, we also need to really figure out as to what is it appealing to the customer? Often we look at things from our angle and we think, oh, I have an amazing product. But we don't actually understand it from the consumer side. And I think if you're obsessed with your customer and you talk to them and you hear them and you engage with them, uh, you'll actually find that customer acquisition doesn't become so hard. Definitely. If your product has a value, if your product has dumb hai, value, hai, or if you want your product to use yourself, now that is a very simple solution. If you're wanting to know that you want to change your business and you want to change your business and you want to change your business, it's a very easy way. Would you use your product? You see value in that. If yes, your business is scalable, not just in India, but in Southeast Asia as well. That's the thought. So we have Meghna Joshi. We are working in the space of skill development and education and plan to soon go digital by creating our own app. Is this a good direction to move? I mean, what do you think as an entrepreneur? <laughs> One line is uh, difficult to comment on, Deepa. I would not want to give uh, uh, any advice based on one line. Uh, I never do. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Adam Power is, uh, you know, with the women that I do mentor, uh, we spend hours mm -hmm. uh, in really understanding their businesses and really going to detail of them. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think the journey is so much about the individual, not just the business. Absolutely. That's very well said. But having said that, I want to tell you all, let me take this opportunity to reiterate. We are going to create something wonderful that we're going to announce at the end of January. Something very powerful, which we talk about is Tech Supergirl. And uh, we are going to ensure deal rooms, one-on-one -on -one sessions, networks, and lots more coming. So 2022 for I Will India and Tech Supergirl is packed. And Amira, like all these 12 speakers, we have another 200 mentors who are going to be part of this club. And we'd love you to join us there you know, in order to be mentoring these women. I think so. I have one more question, Ms. Deepa here. Yeah? Uh, this is more uh, specific to Amira. Like, what have you enjoyed the most about starting your own company? And what is the most, uh, you know, happiest moment in your life when you, you know, were set as an entrepreneur and were on a successful, you know, successful level? 
So, um, I mean, I think the what I've really enjoyed the most has been um, uh, the fact that I've been able to take this in the direction that I want. Uh, in the way, not that I knew the direction up front, but that my impact on the company is so deep and so uh, 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 it's not superficial at all that this organization, even after having 4,500 people, uh, reflects so much of my personality and so much of my values and so much of my thought uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Um, and, and still, uh, it's an evolving organism that also allows other people to influence uh, it, like I said. So I think for me, it's that the fact that I feel like I've had a deep impact on not only 4,500 employees, but on the millions of consumers uh, and patients' lives that we've affected and their families' lives. And that leads me to what gives me the most happiness is, is not the awards, it's not the platforms, it's not the recognition, it's not the media. It's actually when customers, patients come to us and tell me when I'm at a dinner party or when I'm anywhere and they say, you know, your company was so helpful to me in my time of need. Uh, my mother uh, was so comfortable when your phlebotomist came. Your result told us that my family member had cancer and we were able to save them. Uh, to me, those are the most priceless moments. Uh, and I think uh, that's what gives me daily joy uh, really in, in, my, uh, in, in my business because that's what drives my purpose. Uh, and in 2020, uh, I was very happy because two things, big things happened in my life. One, my, my son was born on uh, 9th of March. Um, and I was thinking, you know, in the typical, in the context in India, there's always this thought of work or life and how do you balance it and all of this sort of complex questions that people ask us. And the thought that we all have is that, oh, when I have a baby, at least that first year, uh, I'll have to take a step back. And I was very clear that I was not taking any step back from anything. And in 2020, when I had my son, six months later, I was given the ENY Entrepreneur of the Year Award for healthcare. So that was a really nice moment for me uh, because it brought to my attention again and again what my conviction was, was that as women, uh, we can choose uh, to put importance on aspects of our lives. We can choose uh, to pick up both parts of our lives, our heart, our caring nature, as well as our intellect and our career and our purpose. Uh, and we can make both go forward uh, if we have some support in our lives. Wow, that's amazing. That's lovely. We, we love listening to you on this. And I think we have one more question and then you're free to go. We have uh, we will have our next speaker walk in for 30, but this has been such a beautiful session. Five things do you think are the five qualities that you think are important for an entrepreneur? Five qualities, leadership qualities for an entrepreneur. So I would say number one, um, I think uh, empathy is very important um, because I think especially um, um, as you know, as lives get more complicated, uh, we realize that work and our personal lives are not so separate. Uh, they're all kind of intertwined, and we are the same people. So I think empathy is a very, very important attribute um, as a leader, uh, because that's what helps you build some strong personal relationships. Um, I would say second, uh, to keep going. When, when life pushes you down and when, when things get tough, when you, know, you feel like you're going to fail and you're going home and you're crying, uh, to get back up the next day, to think, okay, today I'll try again, to get up the next day and say, I'll find a way. Just that resilience and grit is very important. Uh, number three, um, Paranoia, very important. Uh, you know, as, as entrepreneurs, we have to be always paranoid about who's catching up to us, which competition is doing what, who's getting uh, funded, why we are not getting funded. So I try to take that self-doubt in my mind and I move it away from self-doubt to making it about paranoia and really watching constantly what's happening. Uh, and when I say paranoia, it's important to keep questioning how we can do more and more and more. Um, so I would say that's a third one. Um, I would say fourth um, is the ability to, uh, to share. Um, the ability to share uh, compliments, the ability to share fame, the ability to, uh, to carry people along with you. Um, I think that's, again, a very important part of building a team and to be able to really talk the talk uh, from the front. Um, so you ideally want to take the blame and you want to share the credit, uh, but you want to really make sure that the team sees you constantly leading, um, you know, from the front. I would say that's definitely a fourth. And fifth, 
uh, is really being adaptable and flexible. Uh, you know, there is no one answer for everything. If somebody tells me, okay, um, you know, should an, should an entrepreneur be aggressive? My answer to you would be depending on the situation. Should an, answer, an entrepreneur be compassionate? Depending on the situation. So the ability to have our toolbox of different skills and capabilities and knowing when to use the skill, the tool in the toolbox, in what situation. You don't want to be compassionate in every situation. In some situations, an employee who's taking advantage of your compassion, you have to cut that compassion, right? Uh, the same way, you don't want to be aggressive in every situation that sometimes you need to work differently. So I think keeping all the tools in the box and I really pick up each tool and I use it at different points in my life. And that's why I say adaptive and flexible. Wonderful. So with that, thank you so much, Amira. I hope many ladies have connected to your story. We have learned three, four things. But the lessons for me today, number eight, that conflict nahi hai, tab tak, until you go through the problem, you cannot face it. So don't be scared to face the problem. That is one. Have the courage of conviction. Paranoia is very natural when you play a big game, you think you don't have to worry. Self-doubt will happen. So don't take tension. और कई बार ऐसा होता है कई केसेस में फैमिलीज भी सपोर्टिव नहीं होती हैं बिकॉज ये एक लोनली जर्नी है ऑन्टरप्रिनशिप जर्नी इज अ लोनली जर्नी सो डू नॉट एवर गिव अप मोस्ट ऑफ अस हैव गिविंग अप थॉट्स एवरी डे बट द विनर वॉज ओनली इफ दे यू नो हेल्प दे होल्ड दम सेल्फ टाइट टू दर पॉजिटिव बिलीव सो विद अमीरा आई लाइक टू थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल दिमेन हो लिसनिंग टू आई हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व पीपल ऑन माई स्क्रीन एंड ऑल द लेडीज एट टेक्स सुपर गर्ल इन आई विल इंडिया थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग इन टूडे and uh, we hope to have you as a patron on board in our future events keep coming and keep enlightening us with your beautiful thoughts and motivating thoughts and thanks guys all the best so much amira lovely lovely having you here thanks a lot and a good evening to you rajesh is known to build the world's largest trucking network and a unicorn as the co-founder and ceo of blackbar i'm sure he is championing the fundraising game now that is the biggest thing at such a young age I'd like to tell you that he is a IIT Kharagpur graduate, and many many milestones to achieve for him. So, Rajesh, over to you. And we really want to hear this journey. You know what led you, you know, to start this story, the genesis, how it began. And over to you. And we are all eager. And ladies, let your questions come after you after he finishes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so Deepa, I think. Uh... Uh, for me, um, building, wanting to build Blackbird was more uh, from a context of being part of the industry, right? Yeah. So, um, as as you were introducing me, right? Two thousand ten is when I graduated out of IIT Kharagpur, joined a business of ITC, which was one of the like large, like, which is a leaf tobacco business, one of the largest businesses for the company. Uh, was doing supply chain, and that's where essentially. for the company we were able to like save massive amount of cost efficiencies right so what it was very clear was that you know at a macro level india is inefficient on logistics cost at a company level it was inefficient and if you could do few simple things right you were able to like let's say help uh, you know beat the service levels help the cost and when like you know then start exploring reading about what's happening at india level reading about what can we do better right and that's where essentially the opportunity stumbled upon that like this is a wide deep space uh you know uh, people have tried that before it wasn't that it was us trying to say that let's build the marketplace for freight people tried that before people did not succeed right and it was more like a very i would say gut based decision saying that okay you know uh, i think somebody has to do this 10 years down the lane freight will be operated very differently it will not be operated in the way today where like out of 30 days you know 30 15 days are still idling right so i think that was basically a, a mix of macro trends mix of what the work i did at idc right and saying that okay let's build this and that's how the journey started and i was very fortunate to get uh, and and to build a company i think it's very important to have a very strong i would say not only the founders but also the founding team so you know two of the people with whom i worked very deeply one of them was in consulting right uh, he was the first guy i discussed the idea with the other person was my first ever you know uh, reportee or he was my intern actually and then he joined my team back in 2014 he graduated from iit kharagpur in 2013 
So three of us sort of came together in 2015 and said that let's build this. And was very fortunate to have a founding team in the first year, which was like with multi skill sets, very passionate, right? Wonderful. So you are saying that relationships go a long way because you happen to find your co-founders who had the supplementary, you know, qualities, and that that is what led you to build the unicorn. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. But I'm very keen to know if anybody wants to build a unicorn. Now, this is this is such a statement which does not validate in itself. But what are the three or four key constituents or ingredients you think when you want to build a company like yours? What do you think are the four things that lead you to the grit and determination to do it? Yeah, I think uh, first, like probably uh, 60 seconds of gyan, right? Um, don't try to build a unicorn, right? Try to solve a problem. Try to live through a journey. Try to create impact, right? And try to do something which you feel very natural about it, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, if if let's say I was probably building Facebook, I would have failed miserably, right? If Mark Zuckerberg was probably building trucking, I don't know the chances of success, right? Okay. So I think you know the first thing is try not to you know um, you know probably become a like you know become a unicorn CEO, right? Try for doing things which come to you naturally, which you feel love for, which you know like no matter what you will always stay there to like you know make it happen, right? So and this is something which I share uh, you know with few of the people is that. like the building the building a company journey solving a problem at an india scale right is a journey where uh, you know there will be a lot of lows than highs right and in those lows the only thing which will stay with you is the reason you started this correct and the reason has to be so strong because unicorn ceo banna hai wo reason generally is not that strong right the, because when you are at the shittiest point in your life to like do things like you know charisma and all that comes later right first is survival first is people around you right who have come, who have, who have, you know trusted you on this journey right investors everybody right so i think so yeah so you know before getting into the more mechanics of building a great company i think the you know don't build it for the unicorn so hence you know coming into you know what 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 will it take first is the right motivation to start right uh like few entrepreneurs i speak to uh, you know uh, like if i hear the reasons like i'm starting because i want to be my own boss right mm-hmm. i want to like you know be independent i don't like working somewhere right those are like the most worst reasons to start because those don't give you long enduring sustained motivations right uh, second i would say is that i think building a company uh, like let's say you know when you are when you are starting up and you want to create an impact choose the space which you know, generally a large space helps you like go wrong by multiple times but you still have the industry right the problem right right and in that problem ensure that you are having some tailwinds right because when you play in the tailwinds you always win when you play in headwinds you always lose right building a it services company today versus the 95 it is very tough to build it today 95 agar wo 85 mein chalu hoti wo shayad like probably if infosys started 10 years before they wouldn't have been successful be very uh, you know uh, you will never have a direct answer right so be ready with having a very open mind right to experiment like you know like be very little or i would say drawing boards right do drawing board drawing board thinking be thoughtful but i think just go out and experiment and try different product market fits right get to the market faster understand customers properly right so do more iterations obviously don't like you know bet the farm on like those experiments but point is i think there's a way to do that right so i think so the third advice would be like you know iterate fast iterate often right and uh, and yeah but hit the market rather than being on the drawing board for a long time wonderful that that's so so valuable so these are four things that i pick up from what you told us one is uh, the beautiful thing the first thing that you said today co-founders if you have great relationships in cash them you need to have like mind founders the second is solve a problem the third is choose something that you love and thrive on or sabse badi baat ki passion is the most important like you said you know, to be passionate and just you know go all out take the plunge that is what we learn from this I'd say that you sound as a specialist, and like you have distinguished expertise in funding. And we have many questions. There's a lady, Alka Mehta, who's asking, Rajesh, how did you fund your startup, and how long did it take you to get to your funding? ये सवाल हमारा भी आपसे 
कि आपके पहली फंडिंग कब ली थी एंड व्हेन इज द राइट टाइम टू टेक फंडिंग इन बिजनेस या 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 सो आई विल हियर आई विल प्रोबब्ली यू नो आई आई विल गिव यू टू माइंडसेट्स राइट आई वुड से थ्री माइंडसेट्स फर्स्ट इज व्हेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग अप राइट यू डेफिनेटली नीड मनी टू सी थ्रू एट लीस्ट टू इयर्स टॉकिंग अबाउट फंड रेजिंग राइट सी देखो बेसिकली सीड स्टेज फंडिंग राइट सीड स्टेज अर्ली स्टेज फंडिंग सीरीज ऑफ फंडिंग typically comes behind few things right first is the founding team right which market are you getting into right and in that market is there profit margin in that in that market is there like is this the right time for you to enter that particular market right so market has to be big right because any investor who's putting money is in, in, investing behind saying that mujhe i want big returns everybody invest with a view of a unicorn they don't invest with a view ki yaar मैं तुम्हें एक करोड़ रुपए दे दूंगा तुम इसका मुझे चार करोड़ वापस कर देना दो अर्ली स्टेज इन्वेस्टिंग इज हाई रिस्क फॉर अ वेरी हाई रिटर्न राइट सो हेंस द डीप मार्केट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच यूर स्टार्टिंग राइट राइट सो आई थिंक आई थिंक एंड थर्ड इफ इट ऑल यूर एबल टू डू एनी एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड आर एबल टू प्रूव समथिंग दैट योर गो टू मार्केट एंड योर आइडिया इज राइट आई थिंक दैट्स लाइक यू नो ग्रेट पोजिशन टू बी दीज आर थ्री पिलर्स ऑन विच एनी अर्ली स्टेज फंड रेज है the founding team and the market was so appropriate that like we fundraised it was it was we, we got very lucky because 2nd of april was my last day we fundraised on like 7th of april right so we got very lucky right but i think this that story is not really important but i think i will tell you why that fundraise also happened so fast was because we were playing a mass market we were playing in a market where all the investors had known that this market has to get disrupted right beat for ecom beat for the normal ba- based logistics for everything right so that was very clear and the founding team like had done logistics for like you know cumulative 25 years so they were like this is a company to bet on we did not have any proof point right so hence fundraise happens for like the first two things 80 90% of the weightage right now at the same time fundraise did not happen so easily for all my fundraises in the past right so i think what's really important is like you know get your story as simply easy as possible which demonstrates the market your your go to market The, the the you know the problem you are solving the largeness of that problem the go to market and the founding team right around this you should be able to prove that this idea has to get funded right pmf ko samajhne ke liye to understand pmf there are a lot of metrics right for a saas business there are like 7 8 metrics for a market based business there are like 10 metrics right so ensure you know what things are so you are not making like rookie mistakes uh, while you are raising all right now that's the pretty informative so uh, rajesh एक चीज और मैं आपसे पूछना होंगी आई वॉज गूगलिंग एंड आई बिलीव दट यू इन्वेस्टेड इन फ्यू स्टार्टअप आपने खुद भी इन्वेस्टमेंट किए हैं आपने इस साल भी इन्वेस्टमेंट किया है एज अ वी सी और एज अंजल इन्वेस्टर माई क्वेश्चन टू यूज दैट वॉट आर द थ्री प्राइमरी थिंग्स दट यूर लुकिंग वेन यूर इन्वेस्टिंग मनी इज इट जस्ट दी आइडिया द पैशन फॉर द फाउंडर्स लाइक यू सैड और एनीथिंग एल्स इन स्पेसिफिसिटी वुड यू लाइक टू टेल दीज वुमन ऑफ टेक्न की क्या है एट अर्ली स्टेज यू रियली डोंट नो हाउ दी आइडिया इज गोट आउट इज गोट बी राइट सो Uh, in my framework of actually investing in startups it's very like obviously it's not charity but very little to do with return more to do with taking part in the ecosystems which i am very interested in and partnering with the people whom like i'm interested in right and in the people i'm partnering with 50 60% or are ex black buck or ex kgp right it kgp right and the remaining are probably the founders where industries are very interesting for me right now the framework of most of my friends who angel invest or even me right it's largely the person multiplied by the market that's it and 80 i would say 70% of the person person is strong right you know that he's going to build a large business you know that like you need to support him he'll figure out you know what things will come in in the future i think that's like the highest weightage multiplied by like did he start up in like you know in which market which has very strong tailwinds if that is great it's a plus right i think idea and all people will figure out right so that's how i think we probably angel invest great so ek cheez mai summarize karna chahungi jitne bhi log sun rahe hain ki passion is very important as per him you know if you are someone who can really truly make a dent in your universe of entrepreneurship i'm sure uh, you know funding is not a challenge now coming to the questions there is a lady and she says i'm sandhya co founder of rev your soul a motorcycle riding app for bikers to connect and create rides she is basically running a bike uh, a mobile app a motorcycle riding app for bikers 
and she wants to know how she can create advantage and scale it yeah so i think i think uh, you know uh, it's such a niche area right i think which according to me is probably driven by very strong passion and love for i think uh, you know motorcycles and uh, you know riding right so i think i think the 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 like if if the if the if the question like let's say you know and uh, you know this is again very 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 personal perspective right i think i think the the context of this is that how do we really uh, the question was more about just scaling this right yeah he she what she's trying to say is ki mera niche industry hai aur main bikers ke sath kaam kar rahi hu to main apna opportunity kaise create karu ki aapke paas idea hai because aapne logistics mein ek den you have created a den so how do i do it with the biker that's what she's asking yes yeah, see i think i think the the problem probably which you started attacking is in terms of discovery of riders with each other right i think that you have already like probably solved for it right where i think the question is that like can this become the 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 company with like massive cash flows right yes so 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 basically generally uh, you know what how people have been able to figure out their markets is that you start off somewhere you get a break in certain area which let's say i think the usage is about really meeting each other right i think the 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 guidance would be that look for alternate markets which are adjacent to these where the traction and the love the user love you've been able to build has alternate segments where there are revenues and which will the problem you are solving as the soul of the company and then will establish monetization avenues in those adjacencies in such a way that you're able to make money there right i think i think that's how probably you should think through because you know we can empathize because the highest engagement areas today for black buck we don't make a lot of money we make decent money which helps us survive right but where we will make largest amount of monies are in the adjacent areas right so i would say like keep going deeper in getting let's say you know the entire india on top of this right but as you do that parallelly you have to you have to solve for money to get excited to come into this industry right in the in the problem you are solving to show the path towards you know how you can unlock probably you know a segment of you know 5 billion dollars of revenue market or a 10 billion dollar of revenue market because anything above 1 billion is very exciting for people to invest in yeah hi rajesh this is nikila from bangalore uh, absolutely love your session love your energy you're full of inspiration Uh, so my question to you was rather I'd like you to elaborate on what you mean by founder market fit, especially from um, you know when we consider a young entrepreneur say straight out of college. So how are they looked at from a VC perspective? Yeah. So basically, when I was saying founder market fit, right? So let's say if uh, I'll just give you two examples, right? let's say your company does not need any people on the ground right company is like pure technology company digital growth very thin service right let's say you know uh, so a person who does not have any people management experience right if he is a like very intense coder is able to think laterally right good product, good founder market fit right but let's say assuming he started an idea of let's say you know Uh, uh like let's say the entire uh, mobility as a service concept in ev right who wants to build a electric vehicle truck sell it like uh, like take loads himself everything end to end which will involve managing 1000 people company right so it'll be like okay this will entail at least having managing 1000 people company 2000 people company all that is operations right or oh, this person is a bit like let's say you know shy now people will be like okay will this person like you know transform over a period of time and should we bet on it because he has an insight and the idea or there is a risk so that is what i was trying to say is product market the uh, founder market fit right so let's say we i my investors everybody knew that we going to be a ops heavy company right we have today 6000 people right when i was in itc i used to manage 1000 people right so that is like 7 years back so uh, so hence i think the the question is that ops hai to tick hai right it, it will be will it be a ops company in 5 years hence yes now this person will be able to manage people oh yeah he's built teams and he's run thousand people teams right so i think so that's the context of founder market fit how people like assess and uh, and yeah and there's no right straight straight forward answer even for a fresher right who would have done lot of fests who would, who would have, may have organized like lot of different things at much bigger scale may have been the head of the student cell right so various things point to the fact that okay like he is strong at like stick order engagement he would be able to pull it off let's bet so that's how people make decisions 
okay. I hope that answers Nikola. और बहुत सारे आइडियाज हैं ग्रुप का हिस्सा बनिए और आप में से जो टेक सुपर गर्ल के ग्रुप में नहीं है प्लीज गेट एडेड थैंक यू एंड आई लाइक टू थैंक द एमेजोन टीम अलॉन्ग विद आवर अदर पार्टनर्स लाइक यू नो फिकी एंड हु हैव हेल्प यू हैव हेल्प अस पुट दिस टुगेदर स्टार्ट अप इंडिया एंड मेनी स्पेशल थैंक्स टू सेतु अमिताभ एंड द अदर टीम मेंबर्स लाइक मिलिंद खरे एंड एंड मोर ऑफ द अदर टीम मेंबर्स थैंक यू सो मच फॉर पुटिंग दिस टुगेदर